So, uh, Dr. Oz and the saltine test. <clears throat> Dr. Oz did a video in September of last year where he showed that you can tell if you have carb problems, if you can't digest carbs in 30 seconds with a saltine. There was a lot of uh, reaction on the internet to that, and <clears throat> someone just brought that up to me recently. Uh, we're going to talk about it for just a minute. I think there's some better alternatives. Um, this is Ford Brewer with PrevMed. Heart attack, stroke risk, uh, cancer, disability prevention. We can help you prevent the major killers and causes of disability. Uh, we don't do all the work. We just help. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> basically what Dr. Oz says is you take this saltine, you put it in your mouth. If you start tasting something sweet in... Uh, I think it's less, or is it more than 30 seconds or less than 30 seconds? Um, then you have carb intolerance. Well, <clears throat> obviously I haven't done the test, and guess what? I don't really plan to. Here's why. I think we've got a couple of other far better options. One is to just get a, a glucometer, uh, do a blood finger stick test. Um, and that can tell you, not do you taste something, but it shows you the actual number. There's a thing called the glucose tolerance test. That's what we're looking for. That's what all the research has been done around. And that's what tells us what kind of shape your pancreas is in, your um, beta cells. <clears throat> so here's the option. Number one, you can, do, you can eat in saltine and see if you taste sweet within 30 seconds. Number two, you can do a full-blown uh, oral glucose tolerance test at a reference lab. And number three, you could do your own in-house in glucose tolerance test. Basically, with glucose tolerance testing, what you do is you go for eight hours without ingesting anything other than just water. If you want to have coffee, you get black coffee. No creamer, no sugar, uh, no sugar substitutes. Then you take a, um, a glucose uh, test to see what level glucose is in your blood. You take a challenge, and that's 75 grams of sugar. You can do that with two Cokes, two Pepsis. Again, 75 grams of sugar is something that is happening all day, every day across this country. <clears throat> then one hour later, you test your sugar again. And, the, and, a, and two hours after that ingestion, you test your sugar again. Now... What's Oz talking about with the, with the saltines? Well, here's glucose. I showed it a minute ago. That's what we're talking about. Uh, sucrose is a combination of glucose and uh, fructose. And here's the flour that you find in a cracker. It's just one glucose or sucrose or fructose after another after another. Here's another way of looking at it where you see the actual uh, molecules. And guess what? It doesn't take your body very long to break down these molecules into sugar. And that's the whole science, quote, science, end quote, behind this saltine test. Now, <clears throat> again, what are we looking for? What are the issues around glucose intolerance? Well, this is an actual... Um, oral glucose tolerance test with a normal glucose metabolism or carbohydrate metabolism during the fasting level, that eight hours and before you take the two Cokes or the two Pepsis or the Glucola, you, get, you should have a number below 100. After getting that challenge, you should spike up hopefully no more than 120. Then by hour two, you should be back down hopefully below 100. That would be a very good carbohydrate metabolism, and you'd stay there. 
Here's what happens with uh, carbohydrate or uh, insulin resistance, glucose intolerance, metabolic syndrome. There are a whole bunch of names for this, but you're not metabolizing sugars very well, carbs, glucose, fructose. Here's, uh, so at hour uh, one, even before you start, what we call the fasting glucose, you can have it 100, above 100, up to um, 130. Uh, a fasting glucose over 125, 130 is considered to be full-blown type 2 diabetes. With the vast majority of people, what we see is somewhere in between. One hour after um, ingesting these two Cokes, drinking two Cokes or two Pepsis, you get a spike. I've seen them uh, up over 300 very recently. And I've seen a, um, a fasting glucose over, one, uh, over 200 recently. So there's a lot of variation here. But again, if it's over, significantly over 100, we start thinking about insulin resistance. Here's the other thing that happens with this patient. By hour two, you're only this patient with diabetes is only down to 180. Now look what, what that means in terms of a curve. <clears throat> when you consider the fact that we eat, you eat three times a day with maybe two snacks, so put that five times a day, you never really give this curve time to get down. And so you're spending most of your day way above the recommended 100 or less. That damages the body. Uh, you've heard of uh, hemoglobin A1c. That's nothing in, uh, nothing in the world except our hemoglobin that has been, there's been a covalent bond from that sugar, that very high sugar, to our hemoglobin. It bind, like it binds to hemoglobin, it binds to proteins in the back of our eye and can cause uh, blindness. Uh, it binds to proteins in our arteries and causes uh, inflammation. It causes three quarters of the heart attack and stroke risk inflammation that's out there. And for you, for you men, a lot of you, will, this will perk your attention up. It can also bind to the erectile, uh, erectile mechanisms and cause erectile dysfunction. So we've got major problems with having too much high blood sugar. I mentioned to you what happens during the day. This is a good, um, a, a good diagram of someone with normal glucose metabolism, as you see, they peak over 100 a couple of times a day. This is breakfast, lunch, and dinner, assuming no snacks. This is someone with glucose intolerance, look, there's, or insulin resistance or metabolic syndrome. They're starting off at 100, and look, they're peaking up over 150. Barely get down below that, and then they spend the whole day basically over 100. And that's not bad for a lot of our patients. Here's a full-blown uh, type 2 diabetic that we talked about before with numbers going sky high and again spending most of the day with uh, significant uh, levels of, of sugar in their blood. Um, <clears throat> while we're talking about those glucose tolerance tests, just wanted to mention one uh, that was done on people that had insulin resistance. And they were looking not only at glucose, they were looking at the hunger hormone, ghrelin. And here's what happened. With glucose uh, challenges, you get a major increase of ghrelin, the hunger hormone, hours three, four, and five. So <clears throat> that may actually ring a bell for some of you. If, you. if you eat a meal that has sugars in it, guess what? significant sugars, hours three, four, and five, you start getting a lot more hungry. If, on the other hand, if you eat a meal that does not have a lot of carbohydrates, a meal that we would call um, low glycemic, you tend to not get that spike in ghrelin. So <clears throat> here's the thing. As I said, I, I, rather than try the saltine test, which I actually have tried that before and I couldn't tell. I mean, I just couldn't tell. Um, 
take the time. It's only about 40 bucks to get a full-blown reference lab uh, glucose tolerance test. Is it a, it's more of a hassle than it is a cost for most of my patients. And here's the thing. Yes, I realize it's a hassle. Uh, you've got to go NPO or nothing by mouth after midnight. You have to schedule the appointment. You have to get a requisition from a doc. You have to uh, go in, get the blood drawn. You have to wait around for two hours to get it drawn the first hours one and two. I agree. It's all a big hassle. But I did it. I'll continue to do it. I recommend it for my patients. Now, why is that? Well, <clears throat> let's get back to the, uh, to the realities. If you have insulin resistance and you start clogging up those arteries, you get inflammation. And I see patient after patient, day after day, with the same problem. Three quarters of it is being caused by insulin resistance or full-blown diabetes. This is the artery. I showed it a normal a minute ago. That's the intima layer. That's the waxy um, plaque. And this is what our body does to plaque. We try to attack it. Our immune system tries to digest it, get it out of there. And yep, that's what causes the heart attack. It's not the plaque itself. It's the hot plaque uh, breaking into and touching the bloodstream, causing a clot and therefore a heart attack and a stroke. Thank you.